Coach, give me your overall view of the whole team right now, where they're at. I think we got a lot of depth. Um, I think we're old and um, pretty veteran on defense, really savvy in the secondary. Um, and I think they've given us a lot of great looks. Um, just uh, a lot of veteran guys on on, uh, on defense, I think, offensively. Um, we've got weapons, whether it's out at receiver or the, I think the tight end room um, is deep. Um, we've got guys that can play on Saturday. Haven't played much on Saturday, but I think they're going to play well. Um, we've got some talented running backs. Um, K-State's always had a really good old line. And uh, I don't see uh, this year being any different. So I, ju I see a, a team that's got really good depth. I uh, compare it to some Big 12 teams that I've been around the last five years. And, and uh, man, we've got some good areas of uh, competitive uh, depth and some competitive battles um, that I think they're important for each guy to kind of raise his level um, and, uh, and continue to improve because of that depth. And I think um, – Hopefully that'll show up in October and November when you have some injuries or sometimes like that, that we're going to need that depth uh, to show up. Last week we <clears throat> talked to defensive players. They were pretty happy with the amount of turnovers they're causing in practice. Well, I think you talked to them on the right day. <laughs> that is my opinion on that. You talked to them on the right day. Certainly there's been great give and take, uh, which I think is – what you want um, from an overall aspect of, of the team. But I think we've been pretty stingy with the ball, and our quarterbacks have done a good job with that in camp. There was, there was like two days in a row where we did not uh, do a very good job of taking care of the ball and making good decisions, and, and they capitalized, which a good defense will, and I certainly think that was the day you talked to them. Okay, give me your overview of where Avery Johnson's at right now. Yeah. Um, Continues to improve. Um, he's got a hunger and a desire uh, to improve. I think just challenging him every day um, is uh, important to him and his growth. Um, he is electric with the ball in his hands. I mean, he is uber talented um, out in space. Um, he's thrown the ball well. Um, so I think, you know, for Avery, it's um, been important to get a multitude of looks um, and we certainly get that from our defense daily, from pressure to, to drop eight um, and all the things that he needs to see. Um, and so I think that's uh, challenging him. And then certainly there's going to be the season uh, challenge that goes from uh, game to day, uh, game to game, and uh, in week to week from different structures. Um, there's going to be a soreness factor. There's going to be – uh, just the grind of the season that um, he's going to get to go through, you know, as the starter for the first time. So, but I'm I'm proud of him. And I'm excited to coach him, and uh, he'll have a really good year. Where do you think he's shown the most growth in this month of camp? Yeah, I think you know when you talk about physically, um, he's done a good job with his pocket movement. It's been something that's been big for us to move in the pocket. You don't just stand there and stand still. It's not seven on seven. That's why I hate that drill. Um, but moving and staying in a position to be able to throw the ball quickly um, and getting his feet in the ground, his cleats in the grass, I think that's been one of the things that we've, we've focused on. Um, you know, I think just mentally, um, and I've said it, you know, already here today, but just seeing so many looks um, and being able to progress um, through a read and, and process everything really, really fast, um, I think I've seen improvement in that. Competitive backup quarterback battle at the moment. Where where do you see that between Roberson and Knuth? Yeah, I've been really good battle with between uh, Jacob and Take One. You know those two guys continue to get better. Uh, I think they're it's uh, it's been healthy. It's been great. The biggest thing for them is to be the best version of themselves. It's not a com competition per se against the other guy. It's how can I make myself better uh, today and uh, stack great days on top of each other. Um, you know, those are two guys that um, they have gotten a ton of reps. You know, Coach Kleiman gives us all these double reps and where we got two fields going. Um, they have had, I don't know, over 400 snaps uh, in training camp. And so I think that's accelerated the growth uh, between those guys. But that'll be a battle that's ongoing. Um, it, 
I don't know when, you know, that'll get decided, and it may be ongoing throughout the season. To be honest with you, and I'm glad we got them both. Are the guys still having their cram sessions inside your office? Uh, yeah, not as much. We've moved to the offensive staff room. <laughs> What what the, they do, what do they do during those meetings when they're just kind of watching tape? Do you do you have specific things that you like for them to do during the meeting? I mean, when they're just kind of looking at film. Well, yeah, you know, we're coming out of training camp, so right now it's. I mean, we've got we probably meet three times a day, um, or have been in that mode, you know hour and a half to two hours each time. And so w whether it's going through scripts, it's going through practice video, it's going through, um, you know, now some opponent video. Um, myself, I'm in there, you know, Coach Kleiman's in there. And just uh, the different facets of a meeting. Um, and, you know, you don't just watch the same thing for two hours. So, you know, I think that's, um, that's kind of what those meetings consist of. We'd spoken before, Camp. Now you're here. You've been around some very fine quarterbacks in the past. I'm just curious if you see Avery have that it factor. Yeah, he's got it. I see it every day. I mean, he uh, he's a very natural uh, leader. He's a very natural uh, starting quarterback. Um, it, I think that comes easy to him, to be honest with you. Um, you know, the biggest thing for him is focusing on his um, improvement I think uh, there's a lot of facets of leadership. Uh, production is certainly r up there really, really high. You can't lead unless you produce in a lot of ways. Now, you can lead in different ways, but when you're the starting quarterback, you need to produce. Um, and then it's the verbal leadership, your work ethic, uh, along with that production. You know, And I think that he knows that. Um, but yeah, he's absolutely got, got that factor. What day of practice is this? Um, I don't know. What is today? Monday. Oh, today's Monday. Um, maybe 17, 18. I don't know. OK. And then how, how much further do you go with this training camp before it's over? Um, well, I think, you know, maybe Technically, it's over because school started today. Is that what you're asking? It's got, yeah, sorry. Yeah. So we're into afternoon practices now. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, they're off today because of the first day of class. Yeah. Matt, are there any one or two things you really wanted to bring to this offense, and do you think you've left your fingerprints on the, the new offense in any way? Well, I think, you know, first of all, you come in and there's been so much successful uh, – parts of the offense before I ever got here. I mean, this offense was second in the Big 12 in scoring last year. Um, and it certainly ran the ball at a really high level. And so you've got different facets of the offense, whether it's the run game or it's QB run game. And then you get into, you know, uh, parts of the passing game. And I think that that's, you know, where some things maybe have been um, tweaked just a little bit, but um, you know, overall, a lot of it will be the same. And I think you know, maybe some of those uh, um, things will come out once we get into season. Everybody can see that. Are there any wide receivers who have impressed you more than, than than the others in training camp? No, I n not really. Uh, I think we've got a good group there. You know, Keegan and um, and Cephas and Jace. You know, and then you got Jay Jack, you got Trey Spivey. Sterling Lockett's had a really, really good camp. Uh, he continues to impress. He's playing fast. He's playing really fast. But, you know, all six of those guys, Ty Bowes had some good days. Um, you'll see a lot. I think we'll play a lot of those guys. Um, and I think that that's healthy. I think it keeps them fresher. I think it um, helps inspire uh, during the week when you're installing things. And so you'll see a lot of those guys. Uh, we're not going to just play two or three all year. You'll see a lot. Uh, see us play a lot. I also wanted to ask when you uh, we saw you practice. You were in the headset. I presume you're talking to Avery um, before plays and whatnot. What What are some things you found yourself being able to re relay to, to Avery that can be advantageous that you haven't been able to say before? Yeah, you know, I think focusing a lot on um, just kind of before the play and maybe really quick after the play, but not getting in his ear, so to speak. Um, 
to to where it paralyzes him. That's not what I want to do. And and we've, uh, you know, we worked it during uh, camp quite a bit. I think just D and D reminders. You know, four downs. You're in the red zone. Um, clues to the play that that we're calling uh, or that's coming up. Tips, reminders, if you will. Um, have you guys pretty much said how your your game day operation is going to be? Is Connor going to be upstairs? Are you actually going to be on sideline? Yeah, I will be. Not work? Yeah, I mean, and he'll be up. And uh, are you going to? How is that going to work? As far as have you figured out how to the whole communication as far as getting from? And I don't know what your involvement is to getting plays to Avery and so. Yeah. Yeah, a lot. I mean, just kind of like I was just mentioning, whether it's you know calling them in or we're signaling them in, or uh, a combination of both. And, uh, Joe talked about uh, with the defense mm -hmm. that one thing that's really helped is that you guys have given him a lot of a lot of different looks. Is that something you feel like this offense has the versatility also to pretty much uh, test any kind of defense? They yeah, I do. You. And, you know, referring back to my answer, you know, maybe five minutes ago, I think I think we do a lot um, in our offense. I think it's it's um, um, it's multidimensional. I mean, whether it's going from 11 personnel or you're getting into two backs to three backs to three tight ends to four tight ends. I mean, we do a lot shift motion trade, uh, playing fast, whatever. Um, but I think if you I think from a general standpoint, going back to maybe my very first question that you that you asked about my overview of the team, that's something that maybe I didn't mention. But if you if you listen to me talk just about the defense and you and you talk about the offense, what you have is a very, very high football IQ program. And that starts at the top with Chris Kleiman. Um, from our assistants uh, to these players and their work ethic and how much they invest in football. Uh, we do a ton of stuff on offense and we do a ton of stuff on defense. And, um, you know, I think the challenge for us as coaches is to how do we simplify and keep it simple for the players so that young players can play and that they can play fast, but yet we're really complicated and we can cover up, um, you know, alignments and cover up, you know, this and that. And so we are multi-dimensional on both sides with all of those factors. So it makes a unique combination um, in trying to be really sophisticated on both sides, but yet keep it simple for our players. And that's a challenge. And when I say simple for the players, I mean to learn and to play fast. But yet when you watch us on tape, it's like, dang, they do a lot of stuff. And the reality is we really do on both sides of the ball. So a lot of people are curious how uh... – uh, Dylan's going to fit in into the offense. Uh, there's no curious. It's not real curious. It's not real hard either. He fits in everywhere. Okay, I was wondering, are you, has it been <laughs> easy to integrate it's, him in? It's been fun. Yeah, sorry to cut you off. It's been fun. <laughs> he's he's not real hard to game plan for. I mean, it's moving him around, and, and he can do a lot of stuff with the ball in his hands, whether it's in the return game and special teams. or um, He's a very natural receiver. He's got great hands. Um, and uh, and he's a high football IQ guy too. I mean, we do a lot of stuff with him, and he's picked it up. And um, really, in a short amount of time, just getting here this summer. But he's uh, he'll be a fun one to coach and to game plan for. Coach uh, Jace Brown obviously has, you know, last season benefited from having the, I guess, seven games down the stretch where he was able to impress. Mm -hmm. How has he grown from, I guess, the end of last season to now, and what does he offer the offense? Well, first of all, he offers a guy that's really confident in his abilities, and he's got a lot of ability. He's got a lot of talent. And um, Jace is a guy that is um, a guy that can play multiple spots. He can play in the slot. He can play outside. Um, he's good with the ball in his hands. Um, to me, he is a um, – you know, he's a post-catch guy because he's really good post-catch. Um, and so he's got speed to go over the top. He's got courage to go across the middle, and he blocks well. So, um, you know, I'm sure Jace has gained confidence from, from you know, his play as a true freshman last year at the end of the year. But uh, to me, Jace should have gained confidence and should gain confidence from his play throughout training camp because it's been very consistent and at a high level. You mentioned 
the post catch sort of ability is this is he a sort of guy where you just have to try and find ways to get the ball in his hands yeah. so that he can make plays like that yeah we got a lot of guys like that but he's definitely a ball in hand kind of guy where whether it's touch game or it's perimeter game um, or it's down the field game um, and he's got the ability to kind of do all of that but we got a bunch of guys like that all right coach i can just ask you uh We've been talking a lot about uh, battles and the depth on the team and competition. Do you anticipate any of those seeping into week one, you know, seeing how they play on Saturday? Or do you think we'll see those wrapped up in the next uh, week or so? I don't know. I'll let it play out. To me, that's that's not my that's not my call. That's, that's a lot of that's players' calls, whether it's not just the quarterback battle, but it's receiver rotations, it's tight end rotations, it's running back rotations. Shoot up on the old line. You know, guys getting to play, multiple guys getting to play up on the the O line, and and my guess is that it would go through the season, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, competition, um, your performance matters. Uh, being ready to play on that first Saturday against UT Martin, um, and um, and showing what you can do. So yeah, I think that's very natural um, that some of those go through the season, and then roles get closer to getting defined. Um, but I think that those there are things that can change as the season goes too, based on performance. Coach Clemens said you've thrown out a lot of ideas uh, since the spring. Would good ideas? Well, I can maybe ask you that question. <laughs> Just kidding. No. Um, I didn't know where you were going with that. <laughs> um, the idea of going faster with more tempo. Obviously, at Tech, that was a big part. So would you like to see this offense move quicker, have more tempo than the last couple of years? Well, I think this offense has had elements of that. And I think um, knowing when to push down on the gas and knowing when to let up is the art form in calling ball plays when you're in this kind of an offense. Um, this is not an offense that's going to go pedal all the way down um, 80, 90 percent of the, the game, like really like I've been used to, uh, whether it was at the last, really the last three stops, to be honest with you. Um, but I think it's in knowing when to do it and, and when not to. And, uh, you know, I've, I remember this offense playing fast at times uh, in Norman two years ago. And it gave us fits um, lining up. And the reason is it was because it was so different from the huddle up and, and then the uh, normal pace. So, um, you know, that's, that's something that I think gets dictated by each game, um, by how the game's going, um, and also how the defense is defending you and how, how they line up. So I think we have that element, which makes it harder to prepare for us, um, knowing when it's coming, when it's not. With that speed and that, you know, trying to go up tempo at times, uh -huh. how important is it to have, I guess, more than just four wide receivers who are capable of being on the field and making plays? And sort of how important is it to rotate those guys throughout just so, you know, when you get to week 12 of the season, guys aren't exhausted? Yeah. Yeah. And to my point earlier, that does help as the year goes on. Um, and it's not just receivers, it's tight ends and running backs, too. You know, we're going to play a lot. And all three of those positions, we're going to play a lot because, number one, we have enough players that deserve to play on Saturday, and they've earned the right to play on Saturday. And when they do, you need to give them a chance uh, to do that. And um, a lot of times the guys that start the game um, will actually play better down the stretch with less reps, if that makes sense. And the reason I say that is, like, as the year goes on and it builds – those are maybe some less game reps and some less practice reps, and therefore you have a fresher Keegan Johnson in the month of October and early November, um, and they're not worn out. Um, but the bottom line is you're not playing those guys. You're not playing a ton of guys if they don't deserve to play and you don't have those players. We have those players. I mean, like I said, we six, seven, eight receivers um, and a handful of tight ends and, and running backs as well. Those guys need to earn more reps, but, you know, we plan on playing a lot. So, uh, especially early in the year, um, just, you know, Tulane week two, the heat here, you know, possibly here at home, game one and game three, you know, all those things are factors. But I do believe we're not just playing those guys. We're playing them because I think they've earned the right to play 
um, on Saturday. Okay, one final one. I'm dating myself, but as a guy that has seen all the Lockets play, I'm fascinated by a Sterling and just what you have seen from him that lets you know that he's ready for this. I think with the absence of game film and game reps to prove my point, um, I would say based on 16, 17 practices right now in training camp and improve Sterling Lockett from, from spring ball. And the way I see it is he's just – he's playing fast. So he knows his assignments better. He knows his alignments better. He knows his techniques and the route running better. Um, and he's confident. I see a confident guy playing fast. When you're confident and you're prepared, you play fast. And it doesn't matter uh, whatever your top end speed is, he's playing closer to his top end speed now than he was in the spring. I've seen a big improvement. And so I can't wait to watch him uh, this fall. And so when you say what gives me confidence is just watching how fast he plays. That doesn't mean it's void uh, without a mistake or a drop because we're all human and those things happen. But Man, he's playing fast, and so that's why I think he's – that's why people are talking about him right now, and he's played well, and he's earned the right to play.